What's up guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make a custom GUI. Now this is going to use commands that may may not be a way to do it with add-ons, um, but in today's video I'm going to be showing you strictly the command side of things. Um, part of what I'm going to be showing you today uh, has used an add-on, but you are not going to need it. Um, and I want to point out all these commands back here, this is for something else, don't worry. Um, but if you're going to be making, let's say, a GUI shop, uh, it'll look something like this for commands, right? Like, this is one shop, this is another. What I mean by a GUI shop is if I come over here, then if I hover over these, as you can see, it says I can buy, let's say, 64 Magma Cream for $2,500. Now, if I actually look at my money, let me set it to something uh, a little easier to see. So, um, this is just showing it really quickly. So, yeah. Okay, and then set my money. I'm going to set my money to 100,000, just so I can show this off quickly, show you how it works, and then I'm going to be showing you the commands behind it. So, my money is 100,000. If I want to buy a stack of Magnum Fame for $2,500, I just click, I immediately bought it, and it took my money. Same thing if I want to come over here and buy a spawner. But, this spawner, per se, is $3.5 million. Now, if I click it, I can't buy it. I don't have enough money. Whereas, if I find one that I can afford, so let's just say a zombie spawner, right? I bought it, it gave me a spawn egg and the spawner. Now, my money is even less, because I bought that. And something else, this is where I said I used an add-on. So, if I click on this NPC, here I have it as a quest manager. Now, this, I forgot to mention, is uh, for my next um, skyblock season. So that's why certain things are set up in a certain way, but this is going to strictly just show you how to do any variant of it. Um, I'm just showing it this way because I already have it set up. But uh, yeah, here's my quest manager, and let's say I want to know, hmm, okay, what I quest. If I click this, then it says in chat uh, what quest are, blah, 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 and don't bother reading that. It's not the best right now. I still need to edit it, but same thing if I click check quest progress it lists everything and you can really do whatever just by clicking something so the one thing about it is is if you're going to do text um in let's say a chest or even have a custom entity with an inventory which is what's happening here um you need some way to force the player out once it's done and that's why if you notice here when i click it it blacks my screen out. And if you actually look closely, it teleports me up and then teleports me back down to kick me out of the guy. But um, that's enough showing off of that. Let me show you how to actually do it. So the first thing you're going to need is a system so everyone has a different ID. So as you can see, I have my main account and then I have my second account in the game. Just so I can show you this. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So if I set the sidebar to show ID, I have an ID of 2 and my other account has an ID of 1. Now that may change when someone else joins, I could get 1, my other account could get 2, and the other person could get 3. Doesn't matter, as long as everyone has a different ID. So I'm going to go to my command area, just so I can show you because I have it set up over here. So, okay. Now, I can't take all the credit for this. Me and a friend of mine, Dacon Blackrose, we made the system a long time ago, but it's been working out great. So, um, I would definitely look up his channel. He makes some really cool videos, but uh, yeah. Okay, for this, we need a command that's doing test for at A. This is for our ID system again. Now, after this, we're going to have a comparator and a piece of redstone, and then an observer. Make sure that this side is facing the redstone, and the other side is facing into our impulse command block. Now, in this command block, it's going to be impulse unconditional and needs redstone. And it's doing scoreboard objectives remove ID. And then the second command block is chain unconditional always active, commands right here, scoreboard objectives add ID dummy. Now, you may think that this is kind of redundant, but I will show you what it does in just a second. So, on top of our repeating command block, we want chain command blocks. So this is just going to be chain, unconditional, always active, same for the rest of them. And as you can see, commands right here, score rate players, add at a id 0. I'll explain why everything's doing that in a second. Let me get through the commands first. And then here's the command for the second one. You can pause the video and copy it. And then, same like the other one, you can pause, copy this command. No point in me reading it out anyway. 
Alright, so basically what's happening. Whenever someone leaves or joins the game, if here, let me leave on my other account so I can show you this. As you can see, scoreboard is not on the side anymore. But if I set it to the side, notice how it doesn't say offline play. That's why we delete the scoreboard and add it back. And now what's happening is whenever I get a score of zero, then it's taking that score, making me add one score to the fake player, and then copying the fake player's score to my score. So in short, that's what it's doing. Um, all you have to worry about is place some commands down for the ID system. Okay, now that that's out the way, this is going to be kind of similar to my cell pads video, um, but it's going to be a little different. So, sadly, we do have to set up a command chain for each player. What I mean by that is if we look here, this is just an example. I'll walk steps step by step through the commands in just a second, but it's clearing an element 4 with an ID of 1, and then same thing but with an ID of 2, Three, and so on and so forth. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I needed some items, like for instance the spawn eggs you saw, they're just retextured elements, but other ones you can use um, blocks with IDs. So, I'm gonna show you now um, a variant of it. So, I did mine a little differently. So, what you can do is you can either start it with a repeating command block, always active, and then start your chain after that. Or, what I would suggest is kind of doing like something like this. So, where it would be test for at a scores equals id equals 1. Right? And then if I put the correct bracket, there we go. And then set this to always active. Now my whole chain is not going to be on whenever no one with a score of id equals 1 is in the game once we set up this. As you can see, it says it's lit because it found me, but if I change this to two, for instance, and this was my second row, it wouldn't because no one else is in the game. All right, now that we have our start sorted, if you don't want to do this, you can, again, just do always active. I'm going to do this way, though, because it is much better for lag. Okay, so to start it off, we, of course, need to pick what items we want to do. So I'm going to just do a chest for now for, um, like, the inventory. And then, actually, I'm going to just set it up so it clones, so it's easier. So, I'm going to do this. You're going to want to do this if you're doing yours. Um, so, it clones a chest, basically. Or any inventory. What did I do here? Uh, what? I have no clue why I messed up. Give me just a second. There it is. Okay. There. Now, a chest clones on top of each other. So, let's say I want to do diamonds. So, I'm going to first, I need to give myself a diamond with a different damage value. How you do this, give command, put the item, 1, and then the data, I can put whatever here. I'm going to put 100. Okay? And now, this is a special diamond. Well, it appears the same as that, it has a different damage value, and we can detect that. So, I also want to, let's say, name it. So, I'm going to do diamond, and let's say, I don't know, cost $5, right? So, you can name it whatever. If you want to put a lawyer, you can. But I'm just going to put it in here for now. Right, put it there. And now, here, it is up here. But, as you can see, click it, nothing happens. Right, um, it's cloning fast, that's why it's bugged out. But, anyway, now we need to set it up so it actually does something. So, what we're going to do here, is we're going to come to our id equals 1 row. And we are going to do clear at p scores equals id equals 1 and then we are going to do diamond and then this is where we put our data i know you would think it'd be like 1 or 100 but it's actually the other way around it's 100 and we can put a 1 or we actually can leave it blank because you shouldn't you're not going to be able to get more than one if you do it'll just clear it so once we have this set up we now need a chain command to say okay what do we want to do after so we're going to set up a chain conditional always active and we are going to say, okay, this is what we're going to do. So, we want to, if we want to take money from the player, we can do scoreboard players test, and then at p scores equals id equals 1, okay, money, and then we did $5. So, we just need to do $5 and then to infinite. Uh, actually, we can just do that and it'll go 5 to infinite. And then, as you can see, there's our command. And then, from here, if we want to take $5 now, we can actually copy that command. And then come over here and just change test to remove. And that'll take $5 from our player. 
now we said we'd give the player a diamond so we should probably do that so we are going to delete a command in here and we are going to give at p scores equals id equals one and then diamond right? and there we go that's pretty much it so obviously you know if you don't want to set up um, a shop system you can change it to do other commands i'm just setting that up because it's the easiest again um, I forgot to mention, but this is me showing a concept of how to do it. I'm not going to walk step through, I'm not going to walk step by step on how to do everything in here besides the base. From there, it is up to you what you do with it. So, but if we come here now, and then I click on this, as you can see, I got my diamond. I can keep doing it, and it is actually taking money from me, because we set that up. Now, if you want to do anything else for id equals 1, you can start with an unconditional command block. It would be the same as a repeating, right? Uh, it would have a command similar to what's in here. So let's say clear at p whatever id equals one iron ingot a hundred, and then you would have your commands after. Again, you can do it however you want. But what I meant by the id system is now we get into we sadly have to copy the command over, change id equals one to id equals two, and do the same for all these commands to make it work with multiple people. So once we set up id equals two, um. I don't want to do the rest because it does take time, but if we set a second row up, then it would work completely fine with two people. If we set ten rows up, it will work perfectly fine with ten people. As you can see over here, I have actually eleven rows in my systems, just because that's what works on your realm. Now, if you're going to only, let's say, make a world and you're only going to have eight people, only do eight <laughs> because you do not want to waste your time because this is a time consuming process. As you can see here, I'm actually working on a new uh, command chain and I just need to do the IDs now. But um, yeah, that's pretty much the base concept for the um, custom GUI. Um, the thing I showed you with the entity earlier is, let me actually TP back there and explain how that was done. So it should be right over here, here we go. Now, what it actually is, is I see, I click it, and it says quest manager up here, but if I do this, um, here we go, if I spell right, okay, I have a custom entity here, which if I summon it, it's right here, it's invisible, but um, yeah, it has a inventory, so let me just kill it quickly, uh, there we go, if I can spell, give me just a second, there we go, okay. And what I'm actually doing is I have this, which is just a function I made, but in short, it is just doing the replace item command. That's all it's doing. And so you can replace item an entity's inventory, and then you can, you know, click buttons in here now. So just, you know, show again, that works. And my system for this is actually right here, because as you can see, here's my ID equals one. And like I said, I'm using elements as because I wanted custom textures. Um, also, something I forgot to mention, some items you cannot do the thing with the uh, um, add the damage value, right? Because some items, let's say cocoa beans, right? If I go over here, they are actually classified as a die. Same with lapis. So you can't, let's say, slash give at s lapis, right? There's block and ore, but you can't do lapis itself. So my suggestion if you need to do something for that take one of the element blocks down here and then uh no that's my mob eggs down here and retexture them to be whatever as you can see i did the thing with um cocoa beans right? and down here obviously i have i changed the names of them because they replace i can't do that sadly yet hopefully but um yeah so like I said though, like if you want to die, it would be like this. That's how you get lapis, right? It's die. You can't do die uh, 40 because it doesn't work. Or if you did die 5, that's purple, as you can see. But uh, I'm not going to go on much more about this. Um, yeah, that's the basic concept of it. It is. It can be two commands per item. Like if you do it smart, like this just clears the item and then you can have this do whatever now i have this do a function but if you just want to tell the player something or even just give them an item you can do that or if you want to set it up as a shop i showed you how to do that but um yeah just remember you have to do it for all the ids um you can set it up two ways to start you could either have it start at always active or let's say test for the id this was 11 so you would have a command that just tests for it at p 
score equals ID equals 11, a comparator, and then a block. And it wouldn't activate unless someone has that score. And then start a new item, you just do an unconditional, and then start with your conditionals again in the same row with the same ID. But I think it's going to do it for today's video. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. If you really liked it, make sure to subscribe. Uh, make sure to check out my Discord. The link for that's down below. And um, I forgot to say, big thank you for getting me to a thousand subscribers. I'm so sorry I haven't been uploading much recently. I've just been busy with a few other things. Um, notably, these do take a lot of time. This is like 8,500 command blocks, so please forgive me there. But um, yeah, I will see you guys next time. Peace.